everyone. The Catholic Church is the oldest institution in the Western world. It can trace its history back over 2,000 years. Today, there are well over a billion, in fact 1.3 billion Catholics in the world spread across all five continents with particular concentrations in Southern Europe, the United States, the Philippines and the countries of Central and South America. What binds this diverse group of people together is their faith in Jesus Christ and their obedience to the papacy. Catholics believe that the Pope based in Rome is the successor of St. Peter whom Christ appointed as the first head of his church. He therefore stands in what Catholicism calls the apostolic succession, an unbroken line back to Peter and has supreme authority over the church. Popes can speak infallibly on matters of faith and morals, but in practice they do so rarely. Now, in Britain, Catholics suffered a long period of persecution following Henry VIII's break with the papacy in the 1530s and were sometimes regarded as servants of a foreign power, particularly in the wake of the gunpowder plot of 1605, orchestrated by Catholic figures in the hope of restoring a co-believer to the throne. By the start of the 19th century, however, such anti-popery prejudices started to die off and full civic rights were restored in 1829. Today, there are as many as 5 million Catholics, or about 1 in 12 people of the population, but of these, only about 1 million attend church regularly. Catholics are obliged to attend weekly Mass, Sunday Mass, and during the Easter season to attend the Sacraments of Reconciliation, also known as Confession, and Holy Communion. How does the Catholic Church differ from other denominations? Well, for almost a thousand years, Catholicism and Christianity were as one. There was no other church around. The break or schism between the Church of Rome and the other Christian faiths began when the Orthodox Church split from us, the Mother Church, in 1054 over questions of doctrine and the absolute authority and the behaviour of some of the popes. For similar reasons in the 16th century, the Protestant churches also went their own way. The above two churches, in splitting from us, went into denial mode about Christ's teaching in the scriptures, making Peter head of the church on earth. This has been their issue ever since. Now, ecumenism will come about when they face up to this problem, which they created for themselves. The modernising Second Vatican Council from 1962 to 1965 saw Catholicism, which post-Reformation was often labelled Roman Catholicism, though this is not a description much favoured by Catholics themselves, addressing itself in earnest to its relationship with other Christian bodies. It has produced an atmosphere of goodwill and much talk of reunion, but key questions on authority, the sacraments and ministry continue to present seemingly unsurmountable obstacles. Catholic share with other Christians a belief in the divinity of Jesus Christ, the Son of God made man who came to earth to redeem humanity's sins through his death and resurrection. They follow Christ's teachings as set out in the New Testament and place their trust in God's promise of eternal life with him. Catholicism, however, is distinct from other Christian churches in both its organisation and its teaching. Concerning the structure of the Church, the Catholic Church ordains only celibate men to the priesthood since Jesus was, it teaches, male and celibate. In the Protestant Churches, married and female clergy are the norm. 
The Orthodox Church allows married men to become priests, but not bishops. However, they have to be married before ordination. Traditionally, clerics were seen as having a higher calling than the laity, but since the landmark Second Vatican Council already referred to, both laity and clergy have been regarded as jointly the people of God. That same reforming council stressed the need for popes and bishops to consult widely before pronouncing on important matters of morals and faith. But in practice, they retain the unfettered power to teach on such questions. All major decisions, however, rest with the Pope and his advisers. Regarding core doctrine, Catholic doctrine is based on the scriptures and on the Church's own traditions. It believes that its doctrines were revealed to the Apostles and have been preserved in the continuous tradition ever since. There are several doctrinal issues where the Catholic Church has a distinct position. For instance, in its devotion to Christ's mother, the Virgin Mary, who Catholics believe gave birth to Jesus without having sex first, and who was raised body and soul into heaven, where she occupies a special place interceding between God and his people. Then there is the doctrine of transubstantiation. That means that during the celebration of the Mass, when the priest repeats Christ's words from the Last Supper, the bread and wine become Christ's body and blood. Though no change takes place in their outward appearance, that's where we differ from a lot of Protestant churches. The church is also well known for its opposition, as stated in the 1968 papal encyclical Humanae Vitae and reiterated on numerous occasions by St. John Paul II to artificial means of contraception, which it, it says interfere with the transmission of human life and the sacred purpose of sex. The Church also is unflinching in her condemnation of abortion as the destruction of human life, which the Church believes begins at the moment of conception. Churches of the Reformation often say that the life in the womb is a potential human being. We differ in saying that it's a human being from the moment of conception and a person with potential. Catholicism's stand on abortion is part of the wider and keystone teaching on the dignity of the human person, person which informs its understanding of all issues. So while much has been written of Catholicism outspoken stance of sexual issues, less has been written on its social gospel, often called its best kept secret. Yet, contemporary Catholicism embraces a distinctive set of social principles, supporting the rights of workers, opposing unfettered capitalism, defending the rights of oppressed peoples, campaigning for a more equal global <coughs> trading and political balance between the countries of the industrial north and the developing south that stretch back through landmark papal encyclicals such as Rerum Novarum of Pope Leo the Thirteenth in 1891, back to Jesus' own Sermon on the Mount. Catholicism is a faith that revolves around the seven sacraments, which are baptism, reconciliation, Eucharist, confirmation, marriage, holy orders, and the sacrament of the sick, which was once called extreme unction, or last rites. The importance of receiving Christ's body and blood at communion as the bread of life, now that is central. The Catholic Church places great emphasis on the moral law and is strong in its devotion to saints as well. It embraces a mystical dimension, most clearly visible in its liturgy, which sits uneasily with the modern secular and scientific world. 
At various Marian shrines around the world, for instance, the Catholic Church believes that a small number of miracle cures of illness have been effected. Great emphasis is placed on the ascetic tradition of religious life as either separation from worldly concerns or, in the words of Pope John Paul II, as a sign of contradiction in contemporary culture. Catholicism retains from the earliest times a strong sense of sin and correspondingly of God's redeeming love. The recent history of Catholicism has, however, been one of successes and failures. The charismatic Polish-born St. John Paul II was widely hailed as the spark from heaven who ignited the revolutions that swept away the Iron Curtain in the late 1980s. In the developing world, its congregations grow apace and its seminaries and convents have no shortage of vocations to the religious life. But in Europe and North and South America, however, because of the secularization of the prevailing culture, numbers of churchgoers have decreased and papal authority has been questioned. There has been a marked exodus from the priesthood and female religious orders since the 1970s. Traditional ministries in running schools and hospitals have been abandoned for lack of clergy, lack of religious brothers and sisters. The recent popes have called for a new evangelization to help combat the spread of atheism which dulls our spiritual sense, making us less integrated as human beings. So there you have it. The Catholic Church in a nutshell. For more information, please contact me or any priest in the Catholic Church chose to you. We are always delighted to help. Now thank you all for listening and God bless you all. Oh. Uh -huh.